So tonight, um, we're going to get into character creation and then talk about where we're at and, and, and go from there, if that sounds good to you guys. I've got, uh, I'm on Foundry, of course. So if you want to log into the actual Foundry place, that's where we'll work on your character sheets. You guys have should have all the permissions you need to do the stuff to the stuff. I started working on on the the story elements around from our ideas board on, you know, white council factions and supernatural culture clash and, you know, kind of prioritize what we prioritize to work on. I'm going to turn my audio down there. There we go. I also started doing a handcrafted map for the the uh, the White Council headquarters underneath Edinburgh, Edinburgh Castle. I thought that was kind of cool. All right, let me get the book open here. We're gonna work in and so so we'll just go like just follow along with character creation as designed, and then have some fun with it. Um, you know, the summary there I think is on what page am I on? Page ninety one in the book. Uh, you guys, did you guys, everybody settle on a mantle? I think we did yesterday when we were talking about it, so. I haven't 100% just because work has been, again, terrible nightmare of uh, unending pain and suffering. So I will quickly catch up on that real quick. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, On your character sheet, if you guys open up your character sheets in Foundry on the game, on the, in the game. I got your guys' sheets open, by the way, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna edit them. I'm gonna let you guys they're your sheets. I'm just able to see it so that I can talk about it. Um, when you for your mantle, the best place to call out your mantle is in your high concept. So let's talk about let's talk about that a little bit real quick. Um, so you know, you choose a mantle, create two aspects: high concept and trouble. When you think about high concept, that's like that statement that. You want to make that statement very definitive. It can define who you are, what mantle you are, certainly. It can also define characteristics about you, like arrogant or, you know, um, you know, uh, duplicitous. Or you, you can pick powerful adjectives to, to describe who you are. Um, you can describe your, your station in life. You can describe your mortal characteristics, your, your mundane characteristics right alongside your supernatural characteristics. And and the idea there is the high concept is usually one of the the wider and bigger um, uh, invocable and uh, compellable aspects that you're going to use in the game. You know, it's it's like that. Uh, it's almost like the essence of who you are. So whatever you can put there, you know, in that high concept is is good. Um, you know, if you make you can make it fancy, you can make it. Um, Pretty much whatever you want. It's just a good way to call out, you know, you know, in a, in a hopefully with with good prose, a good, you know, of who you are. Does that make sense? Yes. If you look on page 91, 92, and 93, that's really where we're at in the book. You can see the next thing you're going to do after high concept is trouble. Now, the trouble, now high concept and most aspects, almost all aspects in fate, you want them to be two edged. You want them to be able to help you do things. And you want them to help to be able to hinder you as well so that you can earn fate points in the fate economy, right? So that the GM or your fellow players can use them against you to help you earn fate points. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, the trouble, however, the trouble is generally not two-edged. It is one-edged against you. It's, you know, this is something that you're dealing with, internal or, or external. Um, you want it to be pretty pretty close current. What I mean by that, you don't want a trouble that only shows its head up once in a blue moon. You you want a trouble that shows up, you know, as often as possible because that's what's going to get you your your fate points. That's that's going to be a, a leader for your fate point economy. So go ahead and work on those. Take a few minutes. Don't feel I'm going to be quiet and just listen and you guys kind of work on that and see um see what you come up with. Let me know when, because I can see your character sheet. So let me know when you're, you've got something written, and if you want to talk about it, we'll we'll go around the around the call in a second, or around the the chat uh, here in a little bit, and just kind of talk about it.
once we're done with this, you're going to have five aspects. A high concept, a trouble, and then three more. So, hey, Mike. I see, I'm looking at your high concept and your trouble there. They look very similar. They sound very similar. You might want to, you know, distinct that, you know, kind of break it out distinctively. Something to think about. I'm, that's Haven. Also, I would, in your high concept, make sure you make sure to call out a little bit more about what you, your capabilities. Remember, your all of your aspects create permissive permissions for your approaches, which are on the character sheet is called skills, but in DFA, those are your approaches. So you, you know, your high concept as it's written right now, Hey, would, would probably put you aligned with force very significantly. Uh, haste, definitely low intellect, low guile, you know, based on how you've written it. And that's fine if that's your intent, but don't forget, you're also a wizard. You want to bring some of those descriptive elements into, into your high concept. So when we're writing our concepts, are we using the predefined mantles in the book and incorporating that into, like, with that specific verbiage? You can, or you do not have to. If that okay. helps you, if that helps you, like, for high concept, if that helps you describe your essence, your character's essence, what she is, or, you know, what she's about, then you certainly can. But you don't have to. Okay. That's very helpful. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yep, yep. That's just, you know, that just gives you a starting point. And remember, over time, these aspects will change, too. The high concept is the last one to change, but all of the other aspects can be um, edited if you find out, well, that's not really who this character is turning out to be, after all, or that concept, that, that, that aspect's not really helpful in the game. You'll be able to tune them. What should we be focusing on for our third aspect? Uh, some of the questions there on page 93 kind of give you an idea. Is your character the smartest person in the hometown? Did they possess a mighty artifact? Are they taciturn or verbose? Egregiously wealthy or privileged? Pick something important or interesting that you can just... It's just another... It's just a third one to pull out kind of what you're about.
you can also use it to establish your the connections around your binding to the to the other characters. Check out my third aspect, Mike. Now, once you have the baseline there, Mikey, I know you do. Save the fourth and fifth one for a second. Go back if you if you open up the con the each of the aspects, you'll see there's a box underneath. If you click on the little the little symbol to the to the left of the the aspect title, like high concept, trouble, third aspect, you're going to see there's a box for notes. What well, what we want to do is you want to give just a lightweight example in the notes of how the the concept could or the aspect can be compelled and how it could be invoked and what that does is that helps it it doesn't mean that's the only way it can be used we just want you to give two an example of each so that it helps both you and the gm think about ways to leverage that aspect and what more importantly what you had in mind on how to leverage that aspect um can also be very helpful So I wanna I want some help. <laughs> yes. How can I help you? Okay. So here is my thought, and I want to figure out verbiage. Because I always mm-hmm. have the this is the hardest part for me, is the verbiage part. So the hardest my part idea, all, almost always. Yeah. For sure, right? Uh so my idea is that I want my character to be the model of what the ideal feminine is, so that in each time period I can that would be what I do and that I would be kind of a trendsetter in that area and that that would be something that would both be great, but also terrible because especially during this time period, I would not be doing a whole lot of like instigating, you know, I would be like, there were very certain, there'd be very specific roles that I would be comfortable playing that would get us probably in trouble or make me less useful. Um, but also it would help in social situations um, and skill wise, because there are certain things that women are responsible for in different time periods that would be extremely useful. Like this time period where I would be expected to know everything about food and like homemaking and like uh, medicine and shit for my whole fam. So like that would be something that would be extremely helpful, but then I'm not going to speak up. I'm not going to do certain things in social situations because that's not proper for a lady to do. How the heck do I put that in this thing? I don't know, but that's like the idea I had. A woman of her time. Oh, that's nice. Does that work? Look at you. See, you guys know what to do. It's a good start. Yeah, I would say, you know, you could could start with that. Start a woman in her time and then... Mm -hmm. That's very generic. That's very general, right? That's very general. And you might want to you know, add a little bit to that to, you know, to kind of to specific, specify, specify, specify it, uh, make it a little more specific. So, um, you know, you could add, you know, a, a, a woman in her time or something, you know, add something in there about strength or grace, you know, that's going to be very, very something that might be subtle but still obvious you know what i mean stuff like that does that make sense 
It does. I was starting off with the base that you had typed out in the idea board because I liked how straightforward it was. Mm -hmm. um, so you originally had put child of the middle class, merchant class, seamstress, wizard of the white council. And I had iterated that to be trend setting child of the merchant class and wizard of the white council. And then I could iterate mm -hmm. that again to a trend setting woman of her time, merchant and wizard of the white council. Yep. Do you feel like That's I good. should add additional adjectives to that? I don't. Mikey, Haven, what do you guys think? I think if you like it, I like it. Uh, yeah. You know, okay, can you think of there. Can you think of a way to use that positively and negatively? Yes. Set. <laughs> Absolutely. Check. That's good. Yep. Awesome. I mean, my Yay. high concept is brilliant she lord and stalwart of the summer court. Full stop. <laughs> I love that. That's all you need. My third, my third aspect is immortal nobility for middle class brats. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's a good tie into to those two. That is exactly what it's there for. Would we be members of the White Council, or you can buy that one for like a full? Wizard? No, you could. That's it, when you look at uh, when you look at the mantle and the the different aspects and, and stuff that comes with yeah. it. That's one of the things you can buy as full member of the White Court, which means you're a fully recognized wizard. So even if you're really young, yeah, yeah, yeah. you could be a magical prodigy. Mm -hmm. Okay, because they don't really judge those things on how old you are. It's can you responsibly use the vast amount of power that you have? And if you're 12 and can say yes, then, you know, congratulations. Well, and you have to also think of it this way, you know, you're Heinrich's the way, at least the way we left it yesterday, you guys were thinking about being Heinrich's kids, right? You're, you're his, mm -hmm. his scions and, and daughters, um, your daughter. Um, so you, you're from a, he's a connected wizard, very influential in this time period. He's not yet notorious. And so he, you're, you know, you've got, you, you're part of the, the in crowd, if that's what you want to play, you're definitely in. Um, and so, you know, you probably, if you, if you look at um, magical practitioner, um, you're, you know, the white council of wizards uh, uh, is definitely part of that. So you get, we'll, we'll talk about stunts in a minute, but you'll get, you get all the core stunts of of your mantles and then you you get to purchase at least one at least you can purchase up to three actually but at least one additional stunt and so you'll get to pick uh at least one of those all right i edited mine a little bit all right let me take a look yeah okay <laughs> I, the third one, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's a good one. I like that third one. That's gonna. A... The longer <laughs> we play the game, <laughs> right now, right now, that's not going to be that that big of a deal. But the longer we play the game, when we start getting, you know, a couple a hundred years from now, that's going to be, um, holy <laughs> crap, that's going to cause yeah. you both good and bad, lots of good and lots of bad. Prodigal son of Kemler. Yeah, Ooh, that's real good. That's yeah. real good. Yeah, yeah. Keep keep that one going. <laughs> we're, we're in the two thousands, and the people are like, "Who are you? I'm Kemelson." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be real. You mean that Kemler? Oh, yeah. That Kemler? Oh, yeah, no. it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> All right, very good, very good. Um, let's see where are we at here. Yep, you guys go. Um, I'm uh, Mike Haven. I'm okay with yours as they are. I I still think your high concept is. I don't know. Let's play with it, and then you may want to you may want to adjust it over time a little bit. I think. I think there's some duality there that if you you could get more, you know, a, a wider coverage 
You've got you've mm-hmm. got the 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 trouble and the trouble. You know your first statement, hot headed youth, and then do not respect does not respect authority and elders in the trouble. I feel like you know you're doubling down on that, and if that's really what you want to do, you can. I don't think you need to though. From a from a games perspective, from a, a systems perspective, you can go a little more diverse with that, and your trouble pretty much already has that built in, right? It has that. Right. Or you could put you could put hot headed youth does not respect authority and elders in your trouble, and that's very that's perfect. And then you could use your high concept to expand in a different direction on your character, give you give you some more depth or width, either one. It's just my thought okay. there. The thing about what else to put on high concept. Think about how it's shaped you as a wizard. Your 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 emotional, you know, your emotions, your hot headedness. Think about how it's shaped you as an evoker, right? You said you wanted to do evocation. That'd be something you could put in your high concept, like, you know. I'm certain that hot-headed youth would impact your how you evoke or maybe the quality of your evocation, right? Whether it's refined or maybe not refined. You might be kind of wild and, you know, a little crazy with that stuff, which means poor that poor uh, fey that's bound to you is going to get set on fire. And, and since he's probably immune to fire, if he's summer fey, he's going to be, like, putting his clothes out all the time. It's going to annoy him, I'm pretty sure. He has a word in his in one of his aspects specifically for you. <laughs> Abby, are you doing okay? You feeling all right with yours? I like, yeah, I like it. I feel comfortable with the high concept. Now I'm just trying to figure out trouble and third aspect. <laughs> um, I have a question for Haven. Haven, in your background, will you know that? He that Hemler's your father. Did he stick around? Was he around you when you were growing up? Good question. I was wondering about that. I don't know what his history is at all. That'd be there. That'd nobody. It, there's not much written about it. It's up to us. To, we can tell that story however we want. That'd be great. But if it, if like he wasn't around for Abby's character, but he's around for his. Oh, and so there's like this tension there, like. Asking. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Because well, I, I was trying to think of my trouble. If I, you know, maybe like illegitimate children have a hard time social climbing, and the idea would be that, like, as a seamstress, my my mother taught me my trade. Right, she would have made gowns for the upper class, and I would have been exposed to all of that. But as an illegitimate child, there's no way that I could enter into that space. Um, not only that, but since the side. <laughs> Since so, since social status is often tied to the uh, patrimonial line, mm-hmm. the fact that uh-huh. that's the parent that was missing means that prospects for marriage and other social valves there were not present. Then on a positive side for the trouble, that means that especially 17, 1800s, even into the early 1900s, if I were to have gotten married, I would have lost all claim to any property, money. Yep. Um, anything, all of that would immediately go to my husband. So by living so long and also not having to give that away because I can't, because I can't find a freaking mate or whatever, uh, I would actually end up probably in a better space because I would have all my money still and shit. Like no one had to tell mm-hmm. me what to do. <laughs> but that would be stressful for me because as someone who is the the model of what females are supposed to be at any given time, I would have a great amount of pressure on myself too do that so it's an interesting thought I just don't know how to put that into words very well let me let me add to that thought real quick for two areas one to mike haven's comment you know you were wondering about that the way that you define that by the way since it's our story is right there in your third aspect if you say prodigal son of kemler you can say um favored prodigal son of kemler you could say you know you know, you can state that in a way that shows what your relationship to Kemmler is, right? Which which plays into Abby's questions because she can then also do the same thing. She can show that whether she, whatever you want it, whatever you want it to be. Um, and of course, if it's not your trouble, then you definitely want to make sure it's leverageable in a good way as well as challenging your character, right? So to keep that in mind. The other thing I wanted to say real quick is... Um, for Abby, 
one of the things that just a little bit different perspective, slightly, not really different, but just add to your perspective as a wizard woman, right? First, you've got the woman of the times, right? But as also you're a wizard, right? And and you, you have magical talent. You're part of the, you're, you know, par- around or at least part of the white council. Um, you could spend your, a good portion of your life you could have spent within the halls of the council and very little outside. So like you could have actually sheltered yourself if you wanted to, like if you didn't have the marriage prospects and you had all these social pressures and social issues, it would have been very easy for you to, I'm just going to stay at Edinburgh, you know, or or wherever, (laughs) wherever I'm at and in focus on magical studies or supporting the magical community. They did, you know, the secret secret society. That could have been a place where you got a lot of your higher education from if you didn't have those opportunities elsewhere. Yep. Yeah, Assuming really that you have a higher point. education. Well, yeah. Like, yeah, like evil Hermione situations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> where would she have been without <laughs> Hogwarts? <laughs> She'd have just been a doctor or something. I mean, who cares about that shit? Would that be something that would go into a third aspect or into trouble? Or would that be something that I would relate to the trouble that I already spoke about? I don't know. I'm putting this together. Up to you. Totally up to you. We're going to, at the end of the, at the end of the character generation, you're going to have five aspects. We're going to save the last two just for that purpose. Kind of like, uh, those things that don't fit well, or we need to, or you realize after we go through the whole process, Oh, I want to make sure I have an aspect for that. Can because remember aspects. Oh, go ahead, Mikey. I was just going to say, when you get a, when you get a moment, can you check my, uh, my notes? Yeah. Give me one sec. I'm about to cough here. Yeah take up your valuable coughing time. Yep, let me take a look. See if that's that that is what you're looking for. I concept check. Yep, trouble. Good, good. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah, good. That's what I. That's good. I like the third one too. <laughs> that was good. All right. My, my high concept is all about me. My trouble concept is all about my social interactions, and my third aspect is all about my interactions with you guys. <laughs> That's really how I'm organizing it. Now, Abby, when I read your trouble, Mm -hmm. what what that tells me as a GM is right from the get-go, I'm going to make the fact that you, and this also will affect Mike even indirectly, Mike Haven, (laughs) sorry, Yeah. (laughs) Um, is that the fact that you're one of Kemmler's children is going to be prevalent in the system, right? So you're going to immediately see that as like probably the, when you step off the boat in New York, Alaron, you know, he's going to meet you guys at some point and say, oh, it's Kemler's children. And right now that's going to be probably a little condescending and it'll but it'll be relatively pleasant because he's a great respected wizard right now, although he's missing and everyone's worried that they should be. But for the wrong reasons, um, <laughs> later on, that's going to be. Uh, very interesting. So exactly, that's that's yes. that tells me that's good. Um, Haven, how are you doing? What are you thinking? I think I have it done. All right, I see your what. What you want to do is open up your each of your aspects, right? Open them up. If you open them up, you'll see there's a notes underneath them. And what you want to do is you want to you want to write an example of how you would compel it, and how you holy crap. Whoops. So many dice. What's happening? <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, you want to open it up and write an example of a compel and a, an example of an invoke. What you have in mind, you think you would use that that aspect to gain a fate point and to spend one or give you advantage. This is to help you, okay. this is to think through the aspect and, and, and it, it may, it may, um, 
you may adjust your concept. You might, you might not. It's just also it helps me know what you had when you were thinking of wanted to use these apps. Where in this character sheet do you put things like conditions? I'm going to do all your conditions for you. You don't have to worry. All right. In fact, I'll do yours right now. Let's see. You are a... Do player. all of my work. <laughs> the cool it's called thing... delegating. Yeah. <laughs> the cool thing of this is that um, DFA came with Modular Fate all pre-configured. I, I, all I have to do is go down to this little, th- this little editor and I pick out Fay. And all your freaking conditions pop up. And all I have to do is turn them on. It's pretty freaking cool. You're a summer courtier, not winter. Okay. And. That's just that. super awesome. You see it? They just, yeah, they just showed up. That's awesome. Yeah. So you've got one, four, six. Yep. Bam, bam, bam. Okay. There you go. I think truth always, if I remember correctly, I'll double check in the book, but I believe truth bound is always checked. Yeah. I always have to tell the truth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That's they, yeah, it's always supposed to always be checked time when it, when it's not, but that's, that's from within the game. So that would be very, very important. All right, let me also get. Yep. Soul gaze. We're looking. Okay, so let me get those for Abby. Those are automatic. Let me get those for you guys. Uh, practitioner. Yep. Uh, practitioner. There we go. No, no, not that one. Doggone it. All right, I came up with the notes. Mostly. I'm not sure about my third one. All right, give me one second, and I will take a look. I'm setting up Abby core stuff here. It's asking for, like, linked attributes in the uh, stuff thing. But there isn't one listed in on the thing. So it's just... Hold on, and I'll, I'll I'll take a look. Okay. All right, put that right there. Haven on high contact. Off trouble. <laughs> yep, yep. Lost them on third aspect as well. Okay. All right. You know, a second here.
All right. Where, where, where were you the issue? What was the issue? Sorry. Hey, uh, Rogers. At, um, Rogers. I'm looking on uh, page 158 under Course uh-huh. Hunt Glamour. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm adding that to my character sheet. And when you add it to your character sheet, there's a, there's a block in there that lists, that's asking for a linked attribute. And I'm guessing it's the attribute you use to make that happen. But I don't know if there is one. Um, you use intellect to resist any disbelief attempt. Is yeah, did you put it down stunt library, or are you are you and are you entering it whole cloth on your own? Um, I just entered it. I guess whole cloth on my own. Did they have a list you can okay. use? Yeah, I actually, Glamour is one that I've already up, it's in the stunt library. There's a little stunt book, but I don't know if you guys can see that. It, it's a I, little book that appears right there under stunts, says view the stunt database. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah, there's a, if you look in, in there, it's probably already configured, but it's okay. I mean, okay. you can do it either way. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so let's look at, look. yeah. Export this stunt. So I'm add this stuff to my character. Daddy. Yeah, came, came in exactly the same way. Yeah. So what what it's talking about here, you may cast minor veils and seemings. With a moment of concentration, you may draw a veil, blah, blah, blah. The skill, you'll want to set that. You're going to want to set that. But right now, you don't need to do that because you haven't done your approaches yet. So whatever your most common approach is, and it doesn't mean you always have to use the same approach when you're casting seemings and glamour, but what it does mean, and so you can change it if you need to, depending on the, the, the situation. And for instance, if you're you know under a lot of pressure and you're trying to cast a glamour really fast, it's on the fly, I might say you're going to need to use haste for that. If haste isn't your best approach. You're going to say, I don't want to do, I want to change my, my approach and how I do it. Does that make sense? And so um, there's not one intentionally because you're probably going to default it to what best approaches when we get to approaches here in just a second. And, and that's smart. That, that, is, that is how you're going to want to do it. When, you, when you're in control of the situation, if your approach is like focus, I'm going to concentrate and form because I am, you know, I'm, I'm stronger in focus, then that'll make sense. You know, it's when, when the scene doesn't, help with that doesn't um doesn't justify the approach so to speak then you might have to do it take a different approach does that make sense <laughs> that's how you'll set that abby how are you doing so can you look at my third aspect and let me know if it's terrible or not <laughs> or if it's just quite what i'm supposed to be doing no no that's good okay so de- okay so what i see is detailed and deliberate craftswoman that is that's fine as written i would now when you think about go just for a second remember i said aspects also are kind of the permission set for your approaches it it permits it it permits your approaches so what i see there detailed and deliberate craftswoman you could say focus if you look over it under the skill section the approach of focus might be appropriate there Right, it's kind of it. It sounds like you you have a lot of focus. You're very detailed and deliberate. Mm-hmm. That's that seems to be to be uh, what you're saying. Now, what you and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. When you go to spend points in approaches here in just a minute, keep that in mind because as that's written, I would say yeah, focus should be important to you as a person. Right, your focus is going to be something. Um, that you're going to use quite often. If that's not what you want, though, think about how you can reword it. Like, if you wanted to be more flair. Now, remember, flair, you know, flair is, these approaches are pretty wide. They're gen- they're pretty wide boxes, if you will. Flair could be style. It could be grace. It could be um, excellence, elegance, right? It can be all of those kind of descriptive things. So either it's fine. Either is fine, right? But what you want to try to do is when you when you think about that aspect there, detailed and deliberate craftswoman, to me that says probably focus and intellect are probably your two approaches that really come out with that. And if that's what you're if that's cool with you, then just keep that in mind as, as you're about to go into approaches here in just a minute. Okay. 
Okay, because I didn't want to say the same words over again because I felt like in my high concept, I was saying that I was like trend setting, like mm -hmm. I was keeping up with that kind of stuff. Would I want to double down on that in my third aspect so that I could use some other type of skill like flair or something else? Or would I want to keep it concentrated to just two main skills? I would say... I would say you do want to be wider, right? Okay, I mean, yeah. you want to, you do want to have some excellence, some expertise, but you also, you, you know, you, it's not, you want to be able to kind of not jack of all trades necessarily, but you want to be able to fit into different situations and add different value, right? So I would say be a little, it, you don't have to double down. Now you can make a really focused character, try that out. And then you're like, if it's frustrating you, like this isn't quite as what I intended, we can, you, you'll be able to adjust, but yeah, I, I I like where you're going with that. Yeah, because I feel like I have enough flexibility uh, when I combine them all together, I guess. But I, I'm going to relook at my third aspect and see if I can figure out a little bit better wording there. Yeah. Now, also, Abby, if you're thinking, just, just, to, just to kind of pre-wire you a little bit, we got those fourth and fifth aspects, and you are a craftsperson, so you're like... You know, you've got thaumaturgy and, and enchanting is, I think, something that you had mentioned. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have something already that you've enchanted for yourself, like a dress or or whatever, some kind of embroidery, something of power, mm -hmm. save one of your aspects because that's where you're going to create that item and make that a part of your character, uh, which yes. is, you know, which is really cool. It's a cool part of how the game works. So um, just want to let you know that's what one of those aspects can be used for. Oh, cool. Yeah, totally. That's awesome. Rogers, how you doing? You you okay? Yeah, I'm just adding in the stuff that's not in the, the little book here. Okay, awesome, awesome. I chose Greater Glamours as the, my pick, my free pick. Of, Your free pick? Uh, yep. Of another stuff? Of course, man. I'm, I I'm still going to spend the other the two of my three refresh on, on other stunts. Because I like the idea that he's powerful, but he's got the restriction that he's Point. Yeah, I like that too. I think that fits very well with your concept. Like he, he's I, super powerful, but he, he's he's just bound up and uh, exiled from the Never Never. Like if they go into the Never Never, he's not going with. Them. Like we're that's... gonna have we're yeah well we're gonna have conversations about that uh, especially around the the terms of your binding. So um, one of the things I, I I was doing some research in because the fae that you're playing are generally at, we haven't talked about scale yet. I didn't get into the specifics of scale. Scale is actually really powerful and very cool in DFA. And you're at otherworldly scale where I was, where I was actually going to not mention that whether or not you just wanted to, to just ignore that. Or if you wanted to make that the case, but put a little extra restriction on me for balancing oh, yeah. purposes, I, however you want to do it is fine by me. Well, what I was going to say is you're binding when you're as because of your binding and you're in the not in the never never, you're supernatural scale, the same as Abby and 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 Haven works for me. But when you go into the never never, which you're not supposed to be there, but doesn't mean you can't be there. It just means there's consequences. You re you revert to your otherworldly scale. And also, I want to talk a little bit about um, as part of your binding, I'm pretty sure. Kemler would have, Kemler, you know, even at this stage, and I, I imagine, and remember, there's no, there's no canon here. This is just us. Um, I imagine that he's, he's very, he's very capable wizard. He was the ways and, and he's out there and he's been out and he's got all these connections uh, out in the Fey. And when he bound you, I'm pretty sure his intent was, I got you. I'm going to use you to make sure my spring are protected in a way that, my future plans for them, um, you know, are protected, right? And so I have a feeling somewhere in that binding uh, is, you know, you can't, you can't unleash, um, the, you know, some form of really sure how we want to word it, but you can't do it without, without it, you know, them being in support of it. Like you can't go rogue on them. You can't yeah. go do your own things. You you have to use your powers in a way that supports his his offspring. Yeah, that was kind of like the point of my third aspect. It's like I figured, that's, yeah, that's what he does, right? I, I kind of figured that he was bound before, like like 
whether as a result of like Kimmler had contacts in the summer court and uh, poor Elias here lost some sort of fairy politicking, right? And the the ultimate result of that is they're like, well, go work for this guy, right? They sold your contract. And, 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 and Elias is like, I'm not working for him. What are you fucking high? And they're like, and I'm like, okay, fine, I'll go. And so now I'm working. And I probably have done all sorts of horrible shit or maybe even not horrible shit for Kemmler that I am bound by oath not to ever speak about, right? His last command to me, in my mind, was something like protecting guide my children, my, my gifted children. He may have other non-gifted children that he, that he either doesn't care about or he's using for ritual fuel or somewhere. I don't know, whatever. But <laughs> my gifted children. Guide and protect them, right? And so that's like where I'm at, and it's like, oh god, all right, fine. Yeah, I like it. I like it. All right, Haven, how are you doing? You good? Take a look at your character sheet. Your notes look good. Um, I put, excuse me. Mm. I thought I put. What didn't I put? I didn't put third eye. Hold on, I got to put third eye on you. Isn't there also let me get back to it. burnt out? Burnout. It didn't yeah, let me let me check. Uh third eye. There's third eye. Okay. So you're a magical practitioner. You don't get Where's hold on, let me look. Maybe that's a mistake in the system. Let me see. Magical practitioner. Magical practitioners get evocation, thaumaturgy, and soul gaze. You get third eye sticky. Oh, you do. You get burned out lastly. Mark this condition to further burn why didn't that pop up? Let me check. I will go look. Yeah, I know my third eye didn't pop up either. I had to add that manually. Are you saying we should add burned out as well? Or exhausted? That that one sh- is not one that you guys can add. I have to add that one. Ah, oh, okay. I think. I think. Huh. I'm looking. That's under practitioner. Let me let me double check. Let me double check. You guys are yeah, magical practitioner, unique, <laughs> exhausted and burned out. I see. That is on me. Add. Should we and... are actually I have a question. So um when oh, I'm backing up. So what we think about stunts. You said something about adding we had like a free extra stunt that we would be adding in addition to our Yeah. So now we... that you're Yep. So at this point, what you want to do, if you go to, for you and Mike Haven, you'll want to go to page 138 in the book Mm -hmm. and you'll scroll down. So what you, I I think I just corrected your condition. So you guys should have exhausted and burned out. You should have the third eye. Um, And then your core stunts, I think we've added everybody, either the combination of us adding them together, evocation, thaumaturgy, and soul gaze. Now, you get those are your core stunts. You get one additional stunt that you can pick for free, both you and Mike Haven, Abby and Mike Haven. Um, from the additional stunts, you can see White Council membership, you can see Warden. It does require it, does some of them have prerequisites evocation specialist, enchanted item, uh, lore master, combat wizard, duelist wizard, arcane investigator. You can pick any one of those for free. Um, or you, I will help you make your own. If you've got an idea for a stunt that you think is, is interesting that you want to do, we will make one of your own. Okay. Two things. One, I keep getting errors and can't add stuff to my sheet because it says something doesn't add up or something weird. Oh, so let me take a look. Let me check, take her, a look. check her refresh spent. Uh, make sure, because if you don't set that to zero, the free any free ones that you add are costing her refresh that she should not be spending. And she may be down to zero. Ah, so I'm at negative. Well, it's at. You're supposed to get three. The game. Oh, it's at. Yeah. The reason is you're supposed to get three free. 
And so it, and so when you get the fourth one is where it's an issue. Hold on a sec. I'll fix it. No, no, because each one of those will cost her one. So it goes from negative three to negative two to negative one. You can't go less than one refresh. So two of those are costing you. So all, make sure all your free ones are set to zero. If you, if you edit them, if you click on it and you go to the, uh, to the edit little box. Yeah, I'm, do- it. yeah I'm doing it for him. Okay. okay. For both so of yeah, them. I don't think I don't think that the other ones that you added are in the stunts are there because it kept airing. Um, so I think we have to add those back. And then I guess my other question was, for Mike and I, does that mean that we have to automatically spend our free one on White Council membership? Or are we getting that by default because we're agents of the White Council? I remember you do not have to buy that. What I'm going to say is this: at the start of the story, you guys are still apprentices. Okay. Oh. So you, if you buy it, you're not an apprentice. You've already, you've already fulfilled your apprenticeship. You're a full member of the White Council. If you don't buy it, you're still an apprentice, and you've got to, we'll role play through that. We'll, we'll figure that out through the game. So d- if you don't want to spend your point there, don't. It's okay. It's not going to break your story or, or anything like that. I think I fi- fixed the point issue for stunts, so hopefully that will, that will it clear It should be negative both. three then, right? Yes, it should say negative three at the moment. Perfect. Okay, yes. What's a force versus flare for a magic attack? Yeah, let's let's talk about uh, approaches, right? Don't look at them as magic is always focus uh, or evocation is always force, right? An approach is just that. It's your approach to things. And it can be different for different situations. What you're going to do when you spend your points on, on approaches, which is the next step, by the way. So if you're, if you're getting ahead, go ahead and you can go ahead and do that. When you spend your point on approaches, what you're saying is this is what I, my most com- comfortable approaches are, right? You're, you're kind of rating them. And for instance, it, you know, the natural, the natural uh, approach for evocation is force because it's an aggression. It's usually an aggression, but it's not always. You can evoke defensively. You can evoke, you know, manipul- manipulatively to create advantage. It's your approach to it. You can use any approach, right? And what you do is we'll give an example, just a quick example for, for force. If I take a sword and I swing it at you, Mike Haven, and my my guy is, um, he's a really strong uh, German, off you know barbarian. He's off battlefields. He's got you know, the Germanic traits. He's seven feet tall. You know he's he's you know rippling muscles. And I come at you with a two handed sword, and I swing it at you. That's probably force, right? However, no, it's not a tumor. Exactly. Arnold comes and swings that sword. It's force. However, if I have a very fancy S- Spaniard who is well trained in the art of, you know, fencing, and or even an Englishman, because there were some, there were some very um, uh, Scottish and and British who went into the, you know, the the rapier in the rapier, you know, fencing style, which is not really force. It's more like flair, or it could be, it could be haste. Right. It depends on the approach. Now, what you're going to say is, well, I'm going to spend points on focus. Let's say you spend three of your points. You put three points on focus. What you can't do is try to fit. You can. You can certainly try to. That's what the aspects are for. That's what the situation is. You can't say, well, every time I swing my sword, it's focus. I'm going to I'm going to challenge you in that. I'm going to say or every time I cast a spell, it's focus. I will challenge that if you cast it, if you have to do something on the fly quickly because you're under time pressure, I'm going to say that's not really focus. That's probably haste. Or if it's, you know, and, and you're going to have to use your, your aspects to kind of help balance that out. You're going to have to use your aspects to permit your approach. If that makes sense. Is that, okay. you understand how you see, see how that works? Yeah. And I, I, I'll be honest with you. I know this is going to sound like a pun, but I really like this about DFA. I like how they did approaches rather than a big, long skill list. There's a part of me that wants to bring a, a version of this someday over into the Warhammer side. I don't want to do that right now, right now because that group, will, their, their head would explode. 
if we change anything on them, their heads would explode. But someday, maybe, or in a different world. We'll see. But this is, I really like DFA a lot. I wish I would have seen it, you know, months ago. Okay, I think I got mine then. All right, yeah, I see some points spent there. Now, what I would do, Mike Haven, now that you've spent your points on your approaches, think through your concept, uh, your high concept, your trouble, your third aspect, and take a look at your high concept, for instance. Like, let's see, righteous, righteousness matters, clear distinction between good and evil, wild spellcaster, results matter more than finesse, okay? But you have finesse, right? Finesse is flair, right? That word... Look at your look at your approaches. So your high so concept thinking, stands to juxtaposition. The, yeah, I was thinking more along the lines of like if you're gonna make your spell exacting and all that, I would assume that'd be more intellect or focus focused. Whereas Flair is he's gonna make a big giant fireball, not some well crafted spell, but he's gonna be kind of exaggerating with it. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. That's if that's how you see it. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, that's a good. I like that approach. When you look, you know, when you look over here, when you look at where you are with force and haste, I think that all fits. I think it fits fits very well. I like your, you know, where you're at with focus and intellect. Um, when you look over here at your stunts now, your stunts are are set up in defaults. Defaults meaning like evocation force. If that's not the the preferred one, go ahead and change that. You want to edit that, hit the little button, and put that over to flare if that's what you're thinking. Go ahead and, and set your 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 stunts up to your preferred approach. Just remember right. that doesn't mean you're always gonna roll it that way. In fact, I'm gonna look for ways. That's how I that's my job as the GM. I'm gonna look for ways to move you out of your comfort zone and say, Oh, well, I know you're good at flare, but this is does that apply here? Let's justify it. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. We'll we'll, we'll have those kinds of conversations. Ha, flair always applies. And it's <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. And really I was looking at it as like for him, that's why I have forces of two and flair as three, is because they're very similarly linked in how he's approaching it. Whereas a focus is one. Because that's not at all what he's concerned about. So I don't know if I should separate force and flair more, but I kind of view them as very similar. He's Pumping a lot of power into it, but also being kind of exaggerating with it. All right. Because, you know, he's the prodigal son. Yeah. Listen, he can do the, whatever he wants to. The watchword of flair, it's not whether you succeed or fail. It's how good you look doing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now that's a fire. Ah, well done. Well done. <laughs> Meanwhile, she like creates like a fire that will actually grow limbs back and do all sorts of things, but it looks very plain or very understated. It's like we're caught in. The word. Have oh, it's good stuff. Quite, it's quite useful. Right. Have questions? Don't yes, yes, right. Abby. Ask questions. questions. Um, I'm looking at the uh, stunts in the book, and there's one that says enchanted item. Is that a thing that I can do or is that not a thing I can do? So, for example, like in this stunt, it says you always possess a number of useful items, potions or other magical mm -hmm. gadgets. Once per session, describe one of these items and create an ad hoc stunt effect related to its function, blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So uh, it's not in the stunt database. So does that mean we? I can't do that or I can no. do that? No, you can absolutely pick. I just haven't added it yet. Okay. That's all that means. And all we'll do is if you want to do it, I can do it for you. You can do it. It's either, I can do it really quickly since that's what I do. I'll just create the stunt for you and it, it'll go right in. And if that's one that you want, I can do that. And it'll it'll be in the stunt database and everybody can use it. Great. Now, that'd be awesome. Now, I see, do, but I... now, now, you see, that, that's a really cool ability that gives you exactly what it says. That's separate than the aspect that if you want to use one of your aspects to create this 
beautiful, magical. It's completely separate. So you can do both. Yeah, I want to do both. That's exactly right. That's exactly what I want to do. Okay. Um, I will add it something... to your character. Perfect. Um, and then I think you can also see there, I'm still missing the the crappy <laughs> the crappy stunts that come along with being a wizard. What is it, the burnout and all that stuff? I don't think those added correctly. No, they're, look to your left. They're in your tracks. You'll see them over there on your tracks. Oh, there they are. Okay. Yep. Those are conditions. Those are actually not stunts. I feel like we're 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 setting up a very uh very almost uh, formulaic thing here where where the where the where the dudes are like bright flamboyant and utterly worthless, whereas the woman is like very practical and understated and actually gets all the things done. I mean, that's pretty much. I think I have a feeling she's gonna be she's gonna be like kind of navigating you guys like you would envision a strong woman in those times. They have to do that, right? Because they can't. They can't necessarily, well, they can, but they will get all sorts of looks if they're, you know, obviously the man, they're wearing the pants. So they have to be masters at <laughs> kind of guiding and getting stuff done while you guys, you know, stand in and in, in, in do all the flashy stuff. While we're off doing our rooster, so, somebody's got to do so all get, the I get to, I get to take all the credit and figure out oh, it's all because of my greatness. Yeah, exactly. I, and I have really to useful one. Like, <laughs> Of course, brother. It's all you. Like I have to be totally cool with that. <laughs> it's gonna make my brain bleed. Oh, the second question. Public, I Abby. Have... I know, right? Go ahead. <laughs> my internal monologue is only screaming. in public. <laughs> yeah. Um, where do all our skill points? Like, how do we do that? I know you were telling Mike, but then I was totally reading, so I was like ADD and did totally yeah, no, had no idea what you're saying. No worries. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's go up and take a look at approaches real quick. Uh, let me get back up there myself i'm in the way down on, here on my character it is it says skills it's skills, oh, it's skills. yeah, yeah so okay. so approaches here we go let me see here we go right, so you have um you get one approach at good two at fair two at average and one will zero what, what good is is plus three two at plus two and one and and two at plus one what that means, Abby, all you got to do is on your character sheet, if you click on the little gear at the top of skills, top right, it'll open up a little window for you. And you'll just what you want to do is you want to pick an approach, the one that you feel is going to be your, your best one, the one that you're most comfortable using. Make that a plus three. And then do okay. two plus twos and two plus ones. And then hit save. And we'll, if we need to you know, talk a little bit about that, we can do that. So one at three, two at two, two at one, and one remains at zero. <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna be so slow. <laughs> That's okay though. I'm a lady. I don't have to go fast. That's what you guys are for. I'm deliberate. I'm gonna call it deliberate, not slow. That's <laughs> what we're gonna say. There you go. Yes. <laughs> what a one in guile, really? Yeah, I was surprised. I don't... Yeah, I well, because the thing is, I'd like for her to be like kind of uncomfortable. Like I'm clearly stylish, and I I can like sell things. Like I like people want what I've made or that I have, not because of me having to sell it, but because it's you know, sophisticated Quality. and unique and whatever. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's not because I'm good at selling and it's not because, you know, so it's like when you go up to like, like a woman who's very um, put together and you're like, Oh wow. And then they're like, they cannot talk to you. Like that is the idea with her. She's like, you, you know, peace queen kind of situations where that's what people would think because I just feel very comfortable talking to people. <laughs> So again, Straight completely for, opposite for me. That is the idea. Straight for Andrew Escher. Straight for yeah. Andrew Escher. It's like, wow, you look great. Thanks. It's like, ah, <laughs> please stop doing that. <laughs> oh my God, I love that show. That's like the third time this week that the nanny has come up and I'm totally okay with it because I love that show. <laughs> my mom used to watch it all the time and it was just, oh my goodness. Oh, I love it so much. 
so good. That home improvement. I haven't thought about home improvement in so many years. And I keep seeing things for it because they're thinking about doing like a revival. And I'm like, ah, oh, childhood. Yes. Ah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think we got everybody has their stunts, at least the, the basic stunts to this point. Mike, did Rogers, did you spend uh, for the extra stunts that you wanted already? I did. I've only bought one of them. I, I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to buy another one. Gotcha. But I spent right. the one extra I got. All right. So Abby and 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 Haven, Mike Haven, um, you got your one. You get your. Oh, I see. You bought an additional one, or did you? Did you buy an additional one? Did you get yes. your one free? Who are you talking to? <laughs> Haven, Mike Haven. You I, bought your one. Fr- I only bought your, one. Your, yeah, okay. So both of you and Mike, you can... Oh, I have a question. Okay, go is ahead. What's your third, question? Is Third Eye supposed to be on there? Because it's also on the track. Oh, yeah. That was my mistake. That was me... Uh, let me take those off, both of you. That was because I... In when... Um, so does that mean you know, I have another refresh to spend? No, no. That wasn't, that wasn't counted against you. That was something I did. Okay. Personally, I did that because that third eye was a con- and I made a stunt for it to hold as a place, and I didn't need to do that. So, how would I buy an additional stunt? Well, that's what I'm, I'm about to talk about. So, for you, for you and Abby, you you just you have up right now as it stands, you got your core stunts and you got your one freebie. You have three free fre- three refresh. Okay, that's at the top of your character sheet. You'll see where it says refresh three current three. Okay, um, you can spend up to two points of that refresh because you must always have at least one point of refresh, always, always, to buy w- one point of refresh for one stunt. So you can buy two more stunts if you wish. Okay, from your additional stunt list. Now, what does that do to you? Uh, for Abby, uh, for Haven, I think you know, but for Abby, whatever your refresh is tells how many fate points you start every evening of play with. So that's your that's your if you if you buy two months, you'll you'll lower your refresh down to one and that means you'll start and, and then that's okay, but you'll have to keep that in mind. You won't have as many fate points to manipulate the game uh in each session without earning them. Or earning them by invoking negatives against your restrictions against you using your aspects. So keep that in mind. But it will give you a stronger stunt base if that's what you want to do. Okay. You do not have to do that. It is your option. So go ahead and think about that. And, and if you do want to do that, make your make your choices there. Let me know when you're done. And we will then finish the last two aspects. Um, Does the additional and... stunt come from the additional stunts for that mantle? or Yes. Okay. Or you may make, a, we can make one. If you have a stunt that you want based on your character, we can certainly make one. There, It's okay. very easy to do in the system. Question. So I think I mm-hmm. want to buy one. I want to buy mm-hmm. Ritual Specialist. Okay. Is there a list of categories of magic somewhere? <laughs> like, how do we know what the the options are? Yeah, let's let's talk about that here. Hold, that's a really good question. I will I will break that for you. There's not 